again, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail showcasing yet another polisher today. This one will be on the entry level end of the spectrum. Pricing in at a little over $100, the Porter Cable 7424XP 6-inch polisher will be front and center. The last one was an absolute nightmare, the new Harbor Freight Bauer uh, polisher. I wouldn't rec recommend to anybody. Let's see if this is any different. Let's dive right into it. This here is the Porter Cable 7424XP 6-inch polisher. Electronic speed dial 2500 to 6800 orbits per minute, 4.5 amp motor, full ball and roller bearing construction, and three-year limited warranty. Out of the box, you're going to get the Porter Cable 7424. You're going to get a side handle, instructions, six-inch polishing pad. That's not hook and loop. That's all one piece there. You're going to have to order uh, backing plates to your liking, like a three-inch or a five-inch. Uh, the counterbalance is uh, made for six-inch pads and backing plates. Uh, it also comes with the wrench and nylon spacer. Let's take a closer look at the Porter Cable, the on-off switch here. Inserted down deep enough into the nylon casing, and that's the same, same goes with the speed dial, that it can't be bumped and accidentally powered down. Great tactile feedback. It actually takes a little bit of force to power it down and move the switch. For the speed dial itself, six-speed variable electronic dial with, you can actually hear that, Great tactile feedback. You know what speed it's in. You can go a quarter speed at a time. And when bumped, does not accidentally switch speeds because it's inserted down into the nylon casing far enough. Very good to see. We have a metal shroud. There is no platypus handle to hold on to here. So the side handle for whatever, if you're left-handed or right-handed here, is going to be ideal to get a good grip on the unit. It does have a little bit of weight. We will get to that when we get to the closer look uh, segment of the video. 10-foot cord for the unit. The pigtail is nice and sturdy and long enough. You throw it up over your shoulder. It'll keep the cord from kinking where it goes into the nylon casing. Dimensions on the unit are as follows. 11 inches long. 109 mils from the metal shroud to the top of the plastic grip. And also at the widest part of the polisher, 80.9 mil. 10 foot junior service cord. And finally, when it comes to weight of the polisher, just under five pounds. Like I said, it is a hefty unit. You do know when you have it in your hands. The unit comes with a side handle, which can be inserted on either side, depends if you're left-handed or right-handed. It also comes with this six-inch polishing pad. This is nothing I would use, but um, it is an option. I guess it would work for a quick, simple paint enhancement. And out of the box, you would be ready to go and you can get to work. With this pad here, you'd only be able to do, like I said, uh, a quick one step or an enhancement. Best thing to do would be to go ahead and order a 5 inch and a 3 inch pad. Then you have uh, a polisher here that could be used in many different ways. Slide in the wrench, get rid of that guy. And let's get on a real backing plate. Now you can install a foam or microfiber pad and be much more versatile. And then very quickly install a 3-inch pad to get in some tighter areas. For the look inside segment, 
First we'll take a look at the offset for six, six inch pads and this here plastic grip has to come off to get to the casing. Just use a regular screwdriver, pry it loose and it pulls right off. With the grip removed we'll notice no locking pin to lock the gears so we can spin the counterweight off. It is a sealed unit. However, remove this screw and you can get some fresh grease in there. The nylon casing that covers and protects the wiring and the switches is only held together by three screws. We'll remove those, get to the inside, and take a look. As we carefully slide off the nylon casing, with the casing removed, we can now take a closer look at the speed dial. We also have the power switch. You can see how that works with an 8 amp uh, little switch there. We also have a fuse box. The carbon brushes held in with a little wound spring, which is good to see. It keeps pressure on it which keeps pressure on the carbon brush, pushes it down onto the commentator. To remove those, all you really have to do is get something up under there, lift it, pull it back like that, and the brush will come right up out of there. As a matter of fact, since we're going to be removing the rotor itself, we might as well pull those brushes out. Those have to be removed for the commentator to clear the brushes to pull the rotor and the motor out. With that taken care of, all we have to do is remove these four Phillips head screws here, and we can indeed slide out the rotor. With the four screws removed, gently pull away, and you can get the sealed gearbox Right away from the pinion gear, in there you could see the spindle gear. You could put the fresh grease in through there if you want to as well. And out comes the rotor. Let's take a look at the field windings. Nice, tightly wound. They looked like they had been dipped and protected in a resin. Not quite as thick as I'd like to see it in some, uh, some areas. What's really good to see here is the field winding is a little bit offset. Normally the switch is either down here uh, on this unit. The switch is right up here, so as you're going front and back, it's not brushing against the field windings. If you want to, you can revert back to some of the other uh, polisher videos where the switch is over here. You can see what kind of trouble you can get into if you brush up against it, cause a short. So that's good to see there. Everything's nice and clean. These are CW uh, Chinese bearings. It's not sealed. You would normally see a plastic shield keeping some smaller part particles from getting in there. The only thing that I'm not liking so far, but what I do like, is right behind the commentator here, we have a resin that holds the wrap together. Now, this keeps everything together with the vibration of the machine, and it's really good to see. The laminations are nice and tight, nice and clean. I see no problems there. Again, the winding dipped in a resin keep it, keeps it protected, keeps it nice and tight. Um, and with all the vibration, it keeps it from getting loose and shorting. We have the little fan here that feeds air, uh, keeps the unit cool. All right, let's get everything back together, um, fire up the machine, and uh, give a little bit of a demonstration as to how you can utilize the unit. With everything back together, the one thing I did neglect to talk about was the wiring. The wiring management was fine inside. I would have liked to see a little bit of shrink wrap over the uh, crimped spade connectors. However, everything else looked good. When it comes to the cord, if I can get it to focus in, you're going to see 
uh, stamped JS. I can't get it to focus. That's uh, Junior Service. This is a thermo set rubber cord. A lot softer than a lot of the cords you see out there that are real stiff. This you could throw around your neck, throw up over your shoulder, and will be rather comfortable. A good, sturdy 10 foot cord. All right, let's get this thing fired up. I went ahead and attached the five inch backing plate hook and loop. Slide the power switch front with it set on the first speed setting. And it's very, very quiet with very little vibration. This is at least five steps above that new Harbor Freight uh, Bauer polisher, which I do not recommend to anyone. Let's fire this thing up, take up the speed. Great balance, very little vibration, not a lot of noise, and a great entry level polisher. Let's demonstrate. Have a test panel lined up here. It is an absolute mess. We're going to take a couple passes with both the 5 inch and the 3 inch backing plate and some pads and we'll try out some different liquids with that polisher. It is an entry level polisher so it does have a shorter throw. However, you're going to see it will absolutely take care of enhancements or one steps and even multi-step corrections. Just a little bit of patience when you have multi-step corrections because the throw is not going to be a 15 or 21 millimeter. I attached the Eurofiber 5050 pad and grabbed the Jesscar medium polish. We're going to make one trip over, one trip back, and take a look at the progress made with this Porter Cable polisher. All right, that's the progress that can be made with just uh, the Porter Cable. You can see the type of progress that can be made with an entry-level polisher, the right pad, and the right correcting fluid to go with it. You do a lot of work. Let's switch backing plates, pads, and run another path through it. Backing plate switched, your fiber 5050 pad attached, and grabbed the Jesscar Medium Polish once again.
for a little over $100 and the Porter Cable in your hand, this is the turnaround and progress you would be capable of. Very impressive. And a polisher I can recommend at that price point and level of entry. Time for the final thought segment of the video. The Porter Cable 7424XP 6 inch polisher priced just right at the entry level end of the, the spectrum there. A little bit more vibration and sound than your higher priced polishers, but that's the way it goes. You want to break in somewhere as you get used to these polishers. It doesn't matter if it's dual action or rotary. Uh, grab something like this. Grab some junk panels from a body shop. They're usually more than happy to get rid of some of these panels and get some practice in. Get time behind the polisher, behind correction. You'll feel more comfortable and you'll be able to get more done and to be able to offer more to your customers. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Brian from Apex Detail. Catch you in the next video.